Do you want to learn how to take a cool shot like this? Well, stick around this video. I'm going to be doing the step by step process as to how to take a shot like this and how to make it look cool. Hey, what's up? Brian O'Donnell here. Welcome back to another video. Sorry I didn't post one last week. I had university exams, so I had to kind of grind them out for a week, but I'm back. So today, we're going to do the step by step process as to how to make a deep image like the one you just saw at the start of the video. Now, I have the image in mind of what we're going to do. I haven't actually made it yet, but I'm going to be going through with you the step by steps. Then you can follow along, make your own version of it. I don't know, maybe try and recreate it, but it'll be a pretty cool picture. So the idea behind the picture is to go with the social media trends that we've been looking at recently, or I've been posting on recently, they got a lot of attention. Basically, I'm trying to get a deep message in this one. So the message I want to convey is that you get a lot of comments online, right? Well, the more followers you have, you tend to get more comments, and you tend to get some negative comments as well. And I'm not one for focusing on the negative comments, but I know a lot of people can get hooked on like something people say about them. They're like, how could they say that? My work's cool. And yeah, if you think your work's cool, then own it. Like, just like your own stuff. Doesn't matter what other people say that's negative. Appreciate those who support you. <laughs> so the picture today is basically going to be message telling of a person on their phone. They're looking at, obviously, their responses, and they're going to have a negative response. Let's say someone comments like, I don't know, you suck, or I don't know, your pictures are awful. You, you look like, I don't know, you look bad, <laughs> or whatever they say to you. And behind them, it's going to be all the positive comments, all the, I love your work, you know, keep it up, all that. But when you get a negative comment, people tend to focus on the negative comment instead of actually just thinking about all the positive that's to come, because obviously we can get hooked on the negative thing, being like, no, that's not true. So yeah, we're going to put that into a picture today. So there's going to be one or two different steps that we're going to have to do. Basically, I want to take a picture with a blank wall. Now behind me, there's a wall here, but it's white, and I want it to be a black wall to be moody. So I think I'm going to go upstairs, get a bed sheet. I think I have a navy one, hang up the bed sheet with sellotape or duct tape against the wall. Then I'll have a perfect black background. And then I'm just going to take a picture of myself standing there looking sad with the hood up, maybe. Does that look more moody? Yeah, hood up looks a bit more moody. So hold up, looking at a phone and seeing the negative message coming out. Okay, so I know I said I was going to put it on the wall over there, but the wall didn't really work because it was hard to stick a thing like this heavy with cell tape onto the wall. It's just never sticking. So what I did, I basically, this is two doors here, and I got the bed sheet, tucked it in behind the door, then closed the door really fast, got caught, and now you have a perfect background. I know you can kind of see a little light through here, but that won't come out in pictures. So now I have like a full studio setup when we have the 30 mil on looking straight at me and it'll look really professional, really clean. And now once you're in position, it's really easy to know what to do. So you basically just need to take two photos. As you can see, my screen's red here because the message coming out of the phone is gonna be a negative message, so it's gonna be red. So I'm gonna take one photo of the red in my face like this, lighting me up like this, looking sad, and therefore when I replace the message in, it's gonna look like the message is lighting up my face. Then you look up a separate screen, it can be a white screen or a blue screen, I'm just going to go to my settings, you can't see it, it's blown out, but it's white, and then I'm going to take the same photo, it will be in the exact same position, because then I can replace all these with white, blue, positive messages, and then it's just straight to editing, so let's do that now and let's jump into editing. So, the first thing you want to do is open up your picture in Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to use Photoshop Desktop, I'm using an app version of a Photoshop app, so it's going to be a bit different, so I might say some things like a razor tool that might be called something else in your app, but it's a general same process for every Photoshop app. So, open up your picture first. Now, as you can see, it's just me with the black background behind me. The red lights in my face to go behind, originally for the shot. I did hold a white light at the back of my head, but as the lighting in the room was naturally done, I actually didn't need to Photoshop in that light in because it was already bright enough at the back of me. Okay, so the first thing I need to add in were the messages behind. So first, I added in the red message, then the blue messages. Now how I edited in these messages, basically I went to message, I typed out what I wanted to say, so I typed out like sick shot, awesome shot, all the positive stuff, sent it, screenshot it straight away, and then cropped it in. And make sure your phone or iPad or whatever is on dark mode, so then the background of the text is black, if you know what I mean. I suppose usually it's white, because if it's black, it's gonna blend in with the black background in my picture a lot more easily. So once I had a screenshot, I pressed plus, made a new layer, and then there will be two layers, one on top of the other. I'll then go to blending modes, then press screen blending, and then once we use screen blending, it's gonna basically erase all the black behind, but it's gonna keep all the color in the picture. That's basically what screen blending mode does. It gets rid of the black, everything black in the picture and keeps everything that's colorful and white in the picture. So as you can see, once we do that, it's just gonna be left by itself. Then we're gonna put a blur on it. In Photoshop app, it's called Gaussian Blur, Gaussian Blur, or 
some of that G A U S S I A N or something. I think that's the right blur, but there's loads of different types. It's just a plain simple blur. The reason I'm going to use blur is so it doesn't look as fake and as I add on, you'll see in a second, I'll add on loads of different layers of text. If I make them smaller, I'll make them more blurred so it makes it seem like there's a sense of depth between the text as opposed to just them being plastered onto the actual black background. And for the red text, it was a little bit more different. I did the same thing. I just changed the color from blue to red. You can do that with a hue saturation slider. And basically because this text is a layer by itself, I basically went to reform or reshape or whatever you can use and you basically just pull the corner of the text box into shape until it like reaches the phone which means it distorts it so it looks like it's coming out of the phone as opposed to just a normal text message. Now so you do that over and over again and then we have our picture with all our letters in it. Now this looks not that great. It doesn't look very well. It doesn't have nice tones and you know it doesn't look that realistic. So we're gonna go to Lightroom first. Basically the edit you can do whichever way you want. It's gonna look cool either way because as long as you just put enough contrast to make it look realistic and make it look moody. So put contrast up, put the exposure down around the edges maybe to bring attention to the center subject. I did a few selective edits. I made the back of my hood a little bit more blue and I made the front of me a little bit more red just to have that contrast between red and blue. But apart from that, there wasn't that much. I made the blues a little bit more green so it looked a little bit better. Now, once I had this edit done, I was going, I'm gonna take that picture, save it, go back into Photoshop and now look up on Google Images or wherever you get your images from, maybe stock images, look up for a light flare, so a light streak with a black background. And then once you add this as a new layer, use screen blending mode, which will again, get rid of all the black in the picture, keep all the white. So the white streaks are gonna be all that's left of this picture. And then we can move that around and position it into the place we want it to be. Now we'll do the same for the light coming out of the phone because at the moment you can see lights coming out of the phone, but there's no like streaks of light, which will make it more obvious. So I'll get that same picture of a light streak. I'll put it on top of where the phone is and then I'll change the temperature of it to really warm and change the hue to make it more red and blend it in with the picture and the phone colors onto my face. So yeah, that's basically all you do to edit this. This is the final result on the screen now. I think it worked out pretty well. I'm quite happy with the results. It came out clean, the colors look sharp, and it conveys that message that we were trying to tell. And of course this was for World Kindness Day, so quick reminder to be kind to people. And if someone is unkind to you, try and stay positive. So if you did like this video, you learned anything, any little trick, any little Photoshop hint, or you're gonna try it yourself, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know below if you have any comments on anything. I know I might have missed one or two specific details. If you didn't know about some things, feel free to ask. I'll answer to everyone in the comments. And yeah, just make sure you tap subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you support me as a creator, if you like my work, or if you don't, still appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video.